Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Enigmatica 2 Expert Mode Season 2. So remember how I added the dank storage mod for us to be able to have a dank null of sorts? The dank null is back. It is the update of 1.72b, I think, because there was a couple fixes, but uh, this guy is now back, and we can have full-blown access, so I already transferred all of our blocks here. I even transferred a bunch of the blocks to the storage door system because we don't really need to have all of the terracottas here. Uh, we kind of really want to put probably the red sandstone that we're going to be building with in here, but we can do that at a later date. Currently, it's all in the drawers. But for today, I want to dive into some machine frames from Thermal Expansion. It's time we get to those. We have the ability to do so. So what I'm going to do is get a stack of each one of these casings. And basically, the machine frame requires those with some Minori crystals in the thermal thermionic thermionic fabricator. I have everything ready here to make our machine frames, but I wanted to give you a little bit of a tip of a thing that I also forgot to do way back when I could have. <laughs> so ultimate universal cables or any of the mechanism cables work with IC2 machines and you can just have a power cell or link it up to a capacitor bank or something and have power on all of these and you don't have to use the stupid generator that I was using for all of eternity and making all of these slow. Because here, for example, this guy is making uh, blocks of aluminum or turning them into aluminum plates and we can just uh, do that. No problem easy plates. <laughs> so that is a neat trick that you can use to uh, kind of cheat your way through IC2 power. You don't really need to get into that. So the thermionic, thermionic fabricator is all ready to make all of our machine frames. And there it goes. It's going to use quite a bit of glass uh, for each craft. So I'm going to toss in a couple more stacks like so. Boom. Okay, so I can just let this go and it's going to make two stacks. And in the meantime, we're going to get stuff ready for the phytogenic insulators. So we need to actually just bookmark this guy. Let's get rid of all of this. So we need the phytogenic insulator, which is going to require some lumium. And lumium is going to be made either in the induction smelter or it can be made in the fluid infuser with energized glowstone and tin silver alloy. And we can make this in the alloy furnace. And we can make the rest of the stuff in here because I have the melter and the fluid infuser over here. Before we dive into any sort of phytogenic insulatoring, we need to talk niter. So there is two options for this. I can use the saltpeter essence that we are getting from the seed and grow that and craft it into niter. Or I can just spawn in these guys, the blitzes, and they will automatically drop niter. And we're going to need blitz rods anyway, so might as well do that. And we're going to get four different spawners here. Uh, I don't know really if we do need the blaze. The blaze drops sulfur. I don't know if it's dropped from any of the other ones as well. But uh, might as well do, do all four of them. We can just turn them on and off uh, depending on what we get. So this, basically, these dolls are going to spawn... This is firstly going to spawn a blaze. Uh, and then this one, I will toss in the breezing doll, the freezing doll, and the crushing doll for all of the other three. But I want to just show you with the one what is going to happen. So as soon as that hits 100%, and we can help it out a tiny bit, just do that, we should get a blaze. And then we can just spawn or change it to get the blaze. We can then do a number like this. I have the drops of evil on me. I probably have one of these as a blaze spawner. No, I know. Okay, that's fine. Uh, let's also take a nap, just so we don't get mob spawning. But basically, uh, you're the blaze one, so we're going to toss you there. Uh, and then we're going to just drop a evil in, so we get a full-on spawner. I also made a better magnet. I decided to make the item dislocator from Draconic Evolution, which is just better than the, uh, the ring from Batania. So what we can do then is toss one in here, one in here, and one in here. And those will all spawn us the corresponding type. I'll change the spawners, do the drop of evil, and then we can go set them up in the uh, in that compact machine. I decided to put spawners with one gap in between, and we have a redstone interface for each one of them. So this one turns on the fans, and then this one will turn on the top spawner, which is, I don't know which blaze, because they're all dark and you can't really see, but there's all four of those in there, and we can have a whole bunch spawn and happen 
at the same time. And I believe this ender chest is going to get overwhelmed by items very quickly. Uh, and our magnet is uh, picking up stuff that uh, we don't want it to pick up because it's picking up everything. Okay, so let's not do that. Uh, but yeah, you can see we're getting we're getting blizz rods, basalt rods, snowballs, and pulverized obsidian. And the rest I think I have in the drawers. So uh, that should all get extracted. And I'm seeing we're going to need a bit of an extract uh, speed increase. So let us head towards the drawers and get this sorted. Firstly, we're going to add some speed upgrades into this guy. Uh, and it's going to do quite quickly, I think, if we do like seven. I don't know why that uh, makes it slower or faster. But uh, we're going to grab the basalt rods, the blizz rods. And actually, before we do that, uh, do I have any pulverized obsidian? I do. So let's just toss a little bit of all of this in here. I also think I have some snow. Yep. Uh, and then obsidian. Uh, pulverized. We're going to grab that out of here. So we can then toss this guy right here, for example. Uh, and then we can also do the snow. I think we can put that in a compacting drawer because we are going to need snow blocks for some stuff probably. Uh, and then for the rods, we're going to grab the blizz and the basalts. And we're just going to add you here and here. And I actually might move these to here. So we all have them in, we have all of them in one drawer. It kind of really doesn't matter. But you know, I like to have things organized. But it looks like it's okay now with the speed upgrades. Seems to be keeping up. I don't know why we're only getting blizz rods. Even though I turned on all the spawners which is highly weird. Hmm. Let me go check on them. Uh, here lies our issue. We're not extracting out of this guy fast enough. So uh, that will probably do a bit of, uh, of help, I think. We do like eight. Also, let's just turn this off for the moment. Just so we uh, clear out all the items because there's uh, too many on the floor. Are you going to be faster if I give you this for a stack? Right. Is it connect collecting the items from the bottom? I don't think it is. So let's do this. Let's just derp all the items. We can come over here and then we can just clean up everything. There we go. So that should clean out everything here. We're going to leave like eight upgrades in here. And then if we turn this on, are you going to be fast enough with everything? Oh, let's turn you off. Don't know. Looks semi okay. But essentially, I don't want to have all of these running all the time. So we're going to have some more smarter redstone control over here with some level emitters uh, eventually. But for the time being, I'm just going to uh, be leaving actually this guy on. And I have to figure out which one is which. I think this is the blaze. So if we turn this on, we should be getting blaze rods. I think. Yep. Okay, so that's blaze. You are... Uh, blizz and then this guy is basalts or sir blitz so th those are the ones that we need to be running right now because we need the niter for the phytogenic insulators so without further ado i think it's time we open up another compact machine in which we are going to set up our phytogenic insulators and then i think outside of the compact machine i want to make a tiny little room in which we will encase the few machines that are going to be making us the, um, the, the, the fluxed phyto grow. So I want to make a couple of those. So down here in the base, I'm going to find a nice spot wherever I can, uh, that we can set this up. Uh, I have really no idea which way I want to go, but I will figure out a little spot for the compact machine. And then we can start working on the fluxed phyto grow machine setup. After a whole lot of work and a bit of complications, I manage to get a room set up where we're creating everything we need to create Flux Phytogrow. And I kind of decided to also make, uh, just turn the spruce logs into planks and into sticks, 
because that is a thing that we also need and it fits perfectly in this room. We have three machines there, two machines there, and three machines here. So let's just go through it. So the phytogenic insulator takes flux phytogrow and the spruce sampling and turns that into 18 spruce wood. And it has a couple augments. One needs to be the sampling diffuser, otherwise this doesn't work. And the other one needs to be the monoculture cycle, which I don't really need to have in here, but if I don't, I need to input saplings and just removes the purpose for having to have saplings exported and all that kind of stuff by just having that augment. Makes the machine a tiny bit slower, but I don't think I need to have it super fast anyway. So this guy gets logs, or sorry, spruce wood, turns them into planks. This guy gets planks, turn them into sticks. Super simple. And this needs to be just covered up so it can do like so. And then over here, we start the process by taking spruce wood, which we are going to put into an item frame right up here. And that becomes charcoal. So if I grab one piece, we can just press P and put it there. The reason I'm not using P for this because it's put it, it puts it that way and I kind of don't want it. So uh, over here, we take the charcoal and we turn it into pulverized charcoal. And I believe this guy should be off because this guy is off because we have uh, a bunch. We have 2000 charcoal, which I didn't kind of want, but it is what it is. And then this guy is turning clocks into rich slag, I believe, uh, because we're taking the rich slag and crafting it into the regular phytogrow or the enriched phytogrow, I think it's called. Not exactly sure. We're going to see it here crafted. Rich phytogrow, that's the one. So how I'm doing this is I have a crafter here which has a whole bunch of gold and it's making clocks. And it is kind of slow, so I could get a different crafter to get this going a bit faster, but we can see we almost all the time have clocks in here. It's kind of slacking off just a tiny bit, but basically uh, we can even grab this gold out and just fill this guy up and that should be good. But basically this gold gets extracted into here and we're only exporting redstone out of the system to create clocks and then clocks in the induction smelter have a 20% chance to get us rich slag and we can even get the augments these guys I totally forgot about those we can just craft a couple servos and toss a couple of these in here there we go I think it's gonna make it slightly slower but uh, it's gonna give us a higher chance of getting rich slag and I have that set to a thousand and we currently have rich slag 200 and something in the system uh, and then here we just craft the niter, the pulverized charcoal and the rich slag together to create rich phytogrow. And then we just empower it to get fluxed phytogrow. So in the back, there's a whole lot of conduits and a whole lot of filtering. And the way I'm doing it is with just interfaces, which is kind of nice. Uh, and you basically never really need an import on an expert bus if you just use conduits and an interface. And I don't know if that is faster or sorry, if it's less laggy or more laggy, I think it's less because these just always provide the item. They're not constantly saying we need to export something. So they just provide it whenever it's needed. Uh, and the importer, I, or sorry, the exporter, I think tries to export an item even if the slot that it's exporting into is already full. So um, that is the case. And I need two interfaces because we have the reflux fighter row here and this guy is pretty much full. We need to provide spruce wood, spruce blanks, charcoal, pervised charcoal, niter, sand, redstone, rich slag, and the rich phytogrow, and also the flux phytogrow, because that goes into this guy over here. So that is uh, kind of a neat thing, uh, and it is all hidden in the back. And here we have the P2P tunnel uh, providing us with channels. We are currently using 10 channels on here uh, for all of this, and uh, that is kind of a complete system. And if I remove this, it is all nice and compacted. And we need to add the, the this guys. So let's grab a little bit of those. So one like so, one like so. Actually, we need two of these. And we can put one right here, one right here. And we're going to put one right here. And I'm going to show you a neat thing. If we grab one of each of these, you can, with P, put multiple items into the slot. And it's going to put them like this, which is really neat. Uh, and I should have been using that from the beginning last uh, last season because it's much nicer than having the drawers with the 3x3. Three three. But anyway, this is a complete system and now we can actually go into our compact machine and start setting up the crafters and the phytogenic insulators and actually moving the cloches that we have up here 
uh, down into this compact machine and we're going to have the magical start of all of the resources that are going to be provided for us for all eternity till the end of season two. So I want to have access to our applied energistic system here in the compact machine. So we're just going to go to the middle here. We're going to put down a tunnel, which is made like so in the multi-block miniaturization. So you place a compact machine block uh, on or a compact machine wall on the floor and then eight redstone around it and then a hopper on top and you toss in a redstone. So this guy, it says on top it's facing down, which is the correct spot. And you can just right click it to change which face it is. And as soon as you get to the end, it's going to pop off. So then we're going to add an ME capability adapter, which is its own mod. And here we're going to add a wireless access point. And that should connect and give us access to our wireless, like so. So we have access to our networks, network system, and we can grab anything that we want. I think I'm going to go with machine walls, kind of like I did last time. And I think I had all of these like so. And I kind of had extra space, if I recall correctly. Uh, and I kind of want to do the a similar situation here, but we're going to probably have phytogenic insulators like so, uh, and then like so, and then blocks above, and we're going to have the, the seed. Well, actually, we don't really need to have the seed. What we can have is just the essence that it's creating on the bottom. So we can have another layer of blocks like so. Uh, and then we have another layer of phytogenics and I don't really know if we need to even go to the corner as far as we we have to go like so I think that should be plenty of space for what we would need uh, if we just go like this uh, that would mean we get how much middle click will you work thank you so we would get one two three four five six seven and then we can do seven plus seven is fourteen twenty one twenty eight and then we go like this, that's 35, right? Yeah, yeah, that, I think my math is correct. Uh, and then it's 42, and that would be it, right? So that would be 42 per side. I don't know if we're ever gonna need that many, but we can at least set, set up this many. Actually, uh, I think we should probably skip a tiny bit. We we're going to need a whole lot of channels for this because each one of these is going to take one channel for the level emitter underneath it, controlling it for the item that we have. So I think how I did it last time, I've had crafters in the middle here, uh, which kind of removes a little bit of uh, channel needing. So like so, and then a crafter, like so, and then a crafter. And then the top layer we won't have because it's going to be too, too much. So that would be six per row, so six, 12, um, 18, 24, plus six is 30. That would be plenty of channels. And we have two channels left if, because uh, we need to provide the fluxed uh, Fido grow and we need somewhere for the items to go, which is gonna be the interface. So uh, that should be all good. So if we set them up kind of like this, uh, and I'm just gonna do and start with one side and we can add all of the essences <clears throat> and get them nicely and neatly organized. We can add all the ones that we would have for controlling the, um, for controlling all of the ones that uh, make the ingots, for example, can be on one side of the wall. And then all of the ones that make something else could be on the other side of the wall. Kind of like that is how I want it. So let me set up all of these. I think I'm gonna have to make more phytogenics if I actually wanna do this, but I think we'll actually wait for the time being, uh, I'll just set up another wall, I think, because uh, we could go through all of our machine frames if we want to set all of this up right now, and we can make more on live stream or something. That could be a thing. Uh, so yeah, let me just get a bit of work done, and we'll be back to get ready to move some seeds over. As you can see behind me, I have one side kind of connected up. I do, I have the power cables in, I have the fluid cables in. I don't have the fluid nor the power in because I need to make a power cell and make a sink. And also I have the ME channels all in here. You can see we now have just the smart cable coming out of the top here and it's hooked up into a P2P tunnel with a dense cable up on top. And you can see, whoops, if we turn around and get out of F1, uh, that we have uh, 31 out of 32 channels because 30 is used up with the 
uh, phytogenic insulators and all of the level emitters. And then we have another one for this wireless access point. Uh, and this is coming off of the main channel network that we have at the base. And uh, before I had it hooked up into the green P2P tunnel that we have by making the flux fighter grow. And I was wondering why isn't this working? And you cannot dense P2P tunnels because if that would be possible, then you would have infinite channels. You'd bring in one P2P tunnel and just split off multiple P2P tunnels and you would just get an infinite amount of channels. And that would be probably horrible to calculate in the mod and it would cause immense, immense lag. But this I think is gonna have to be it for today as I am running out of time <laughs> for this episode. So I want to thank you all so much for watching. I'm hoping you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, make sure to hit the like button. You can also subscribe to see new videos. You can support me on Patreon as well if you want. And I will see you all in the next episode. Have a good one. Bye-bye.